The interior of the Vermilion Gym is dark when Ash, Serene, Alicia, and Brock enter, and for a moment, Ash wonders if it might be closed. However, this is promptly proved false when a haughty voice sneers that it looks like the emergency room's gonna be packed tonight. Peering into the gloom, Ash calls out, asking if they're the gym leader, but as a tough-looking man and woman step into view, they shake their heads saying they're just the doormen. The real gym leader's way more dangerous. From further in, a deep voice with a heavy Unovan accent tells the pair to knock it off, chuckling that they'll scare the babies before making himself known as well. He is a giant of a man dressed in green military fatigues and sporting bleached spiky hair that looks like he could skewer meat. And when he sees them, he smirks that two of his challenges are real cuties, his eyes on Serena and Lycia. Turning red and backing away, Serena protests that she's no challenger, while Lycia tells the man that if he thinks she'd be impressed by the big tough guy act, he's sorely mistaken. Frowning a little, the man says it doesn't matter if she's impressed or not, since he's the one and only Lieutenant Surge, Vermilion City Gym Leader and Electric Pokemon Master, so if she wants his Thunder Badge, she'll have to battle him all out. Lycia seems to have some retort ready, but before she can say it, Ash cuts in, announcing that he's also challenging Surge today, and since Lycia went first against Brock, he'll be going first today. Serge doesn't seem that interested in Ash, dismissing him with a buzz off baby, but when it becomes clear that the boy won't budge, he smirks that if the kid's so intent on putting his Pokemon in traction, so be it. He'll clobber him quickly then get back to the girl. As the lights come up, everyone sees they're standing in the middle of a battlefield, and as Serge storms over to his side, Ash takes his place across from the gym leader, while his friends move into the stands. Still riled up from the way Serge shrugged him off, Ash doesn't even wait for the lieutenant to choose his Pokemon, bringing out his newly caught Bulbasaur and telling it to get ready. Moments later, Serge brings out his Raichu, causing Pikachu to call out to it in a friendly greeting. However, Raichu is just as dismissive of Pikachu as Serge was of Ash, causing the smaller electric rodent's cheeks to flash while on the field, Bulbasaur growls at the big orange rat for disrespecting its friend. The call for the battle to begin is then given, and as Bulbasaur raises itself, Quaxley once more pops out of its ball unbidden, cheering for its big bro at the top of its lungs. As the challenger, Ash is given the first move, and so not holding anything back, he opens with a razor leaf. At once a flurry of bladed leaves shoot forth, but Surge and Raichu are unfazed, with the lieutenant calling for his partner to take care of them with a mega punch. Suddenly, one of Raichu's fists glows white, and when it swings a hook punch, the force is enough to send out a shockwave which shreds the leaves into confetti. Despite cheering for Ash, both Lycia and Serena can't help but be impressed by this, noting it down as a future contest move. Ash, however, feels nothing but displeasure, telling Bulbasaur to use Tackle instead, since Raichu can't blow away its entire body so easily. Wrong, baby, Surge cackles, telling Raichu to show off its Mega Kick next. And to Ash's horror, as Bulbasaur closes in, Raichu's foot begins to glow. Frantically, the young trainer tries to call off his attack, but it's already too late, as before Bulbasaur can get out of the way, the menacing electric type swings its leg up and drives the point of its foot into Bulbasaur's chin, uppercutting it and sending it spinning through the air. Bulbasaur lands with a hard thump and doesn't move, causing everyone to hang their head except for Surge, who jeers that he already told the kid that battling him was a bad idea, and maybe they can have a rematch when he grows up. Looking dejected, Ash raises Bulbasaur's ball to recall it as the referee prepares to declare it unable to battle. However, before either action can occur, the tenacious grass type lets out a defiant bark, rising once more to its feet and glaring at Raichu. Delightedly, Ash cries that he knew Bulbasaur wasn't a quitter, while in the stands, Ash's friends let out a collective sigh, and Quack jumps for joy, cheering louder still. Knowing that its friends are behind it seems to give Bulbasaur a second wind, and so on Ash's command, it launches a vine whip. Like with Razor Leaf, Raichu tries to mega punch this away, but thanks to the vines being part of the seed Pokemon's body, it is able to maneuver them at the last second to avoid the hit and strike Raichu in the gut. Howling in pain, Raichu recoils, and with a grin, Ash wonders if Vine Whip might be the key to his victory. He then tells Bulbasaur to repeat the move, though this time as the vines lash out, Surge is a countermeasure, ordering a Thunderbolt. Not being an overly speedy creature, Bulbasaur is hit head-on by this discharge and begins to spasm as the currents run through its body. Watching on, Serena asks why Surge would use a move that he knows Bulbasaur resists, but with a grim look, Brock replies that even if the move is resisted, Raichu is still said to be able to put out 100,000 volts, which is enough to stun a Dragonite. Worry now in her tone, Serena states that a little thing like Bulbasaur can't handle that much electricity, and with a sigh, Brock nods, saying that after the damage it took earlier, it'll be lights out for 
Bulbasaur, unless Ash can figure out a way to dispel that current. However, down on the field Ash smiles, telling his friends not to worry, since he already has a way to deal with this, and it's all thanks to his battle with Lycia back in the Viridian contest. Brock, having not been a part of the group at that point, looks confused, but on either side of him, the girl's eyes light up, knowing exactly what Ash is going to do, and so along with Quaxley, they cheer for Ash to do it. Turning his grin back to the field, Ash then tells Bulbasaur to plant its vines in the ground, and as the two stalks break through the dirt floor, the electricity follows, leaving Bulbasaur free to finish the fight. From his side, Surge admits that using those vines to ground his electric attack was pretty smart, but there's a problem with it. It leaves Bulbasaur rooted in place and perfectly positioned for a body slam. He then calls for Raichu to use the move to finish the grass starter, and with a cry the mouse Pokemon springs into the air to deliver a brutal belly flop. However, Ash for his part has not stopped grinning, and once he is sure that Raichu is locked into the attack, he replies that this is exactly what he wanted Raichu to do as he spins his cap backwards. He then tells Bulbasaur to jump out of the way, and by using the vines to push off, Bulbasaur bursts into the air, rising high above Raichu, who momentarily looks confused as it crashes face first into the battlefield. Briefly, Bulbasaur hangs in the air, then as it begins its descent, Ash gives his final order to wrap itself in the vines and use tackle. Growling its understanding, Bulbasaur spins as it falls, causing its extended vines to do likewise and wrap around it, creating a vine torpedo, which moments later smashes into Raichu's back, dealing devastating damage to the rat, while leaving Bulbasaur mostly unharmed. As the dust settles and Bulbasaur retracts his vines back into itself, it is plain to see that Raichu is unable to battle, and so after a moment to confirm, the referee calls the match in favour of Ash. With a cheer, the young son of Pallet rushes in to hug his Bulbasaur, and as the Bulb Dinosaur nuzzles him in return, Surge saunters over to congratulate them, using Ash's name for the first time. He then presents Ash with the Thunder Badge, and as he pins it to the inside of his vest, Lycia approaches, asking if they can have their battle now. With a gruff grin, Surge replies that he'd love to give for a match, but Raichu needs rest after its first defeat in ages, so it'll have to be another time. Looking crestfallen, Lycia sighs that she understands, telling her friends they should get going since they have no more business here. Arriving at the Pokemon Center, everyone is relieved at their chance to rest, with Ash, Serena, Lycia, and Brock stopping at the cafeteria for something to eat while their Pokemon recover. When they are back in fighting shape, Serena suggests they head over to the contest hall so that she and Lycia can register for tomorrow, and wanting to see more of the city, Ash and Brock elect to tag along. Due to being a day early, registration for the most part goes smoothly, though Serena and Lycia are surprised when the receptionist asks what two Pokemon they're going to use, warning them to choose carefully since they have to use the same pair in both both rounds. Seeing this confusion, she explains that the Vermilion Contest aims to prepare coordinators for the Grand Festival by having them do a double performance and even double battle in the final round. Lycia smiles at this, having grown up in the home of double battling, while Serena remembers her own double battle against Samurai, albeit a little less fondly considering the Beedrill incident. However, neither object to this rule, with Lycia choosing Squirtle and Pikachu as her Pokemon, while Serena picks Butterfree and… Quaxley? In truth, Serena had meant to name Eevee as Butterfree's partner, but as has become an unfortunate trend with the duckling, it popped out of its ball at an inopportune moment, causing Serena to exclaim its name and the receptionist to misconstrue that as her choosing it. Panicking, Serena protests that she didn't mean for Quaxley to be her second, but with a sad smile, the receptionist apologizes that now it's in the system, meaning it can't be changed, so for better or worse, she'll have to use her baby Pokemon. This definitely puts a dampener on Serena's mood, but her friends are there to comfort her, with even even the reception is trying to cheer her up by saying that since only two coordinators make it to the battle round, it's incredibly unlikely she'll actually have to battle with Quaxley. This unfortunately does not help in the slightest, with Serena only growing more depressed at the knowledge of how narrow her chances of victory are. Ash, however, doesn't see what she's worrying about, agreeing that even if Quaxley will make things a bit more challenging, he knows she's going to do great since she's an amazing coordinator, and if she's concerned about battling with her baby water type, he'll help her train. Eyes lighting up, Serena asks if he means it, with Ash replying that of course he does, before telling her to follow him out back so they can start practicing. Watching them go, Lizzie can't help but smile, knowing how happy this alone time with Ash will make Serena, and so turning to Brock, asks her beau if he would be willing to watch her appeal and give any critiques he might have. Smiling along with her, Brock says he'd be happy to, following along as Lycia leads him back to the Pokemon Center. 
To best mimic Lysia's team, Ash chooses Krabby and Pikachu to help train, while Serena uses the pair she has entered in the contest. At first, things do not go well, as it quickly becomes apparent that both of Serena's choices have an overwhelming weakness to electric moves. Not only that, but because of its youth and inexperience, even one solid hit from Krabby's ineffective water-type moves are enough to take Quaxley out. It is an undeniably dire situation, with Serena suggesting that maybe she should just sit this one out and go for the next one. However, Ash will not hear of this, snapping at his friend to stop being so selfish, since even if she doesn't believe she can win, her Pokemon have been working hard for her, so the least she can do is put in the same effort. This startles the girl, since Ash has never spoken to her like that before, but it seems to do the trick, as the shock pulls her from her funk and with a sheepish smile, she apologizes, promising to do better. After this, things do seem to improve, with Ash and Serena making a pair of discoveries that might just net the girl a victory. That evening, the two pairs converge for dinner at the Pokemon Center, with both Lysia and Serena looking pleased with their day's work. Ash and Brock ask if they feel ready for tomorrow, and with matching confident grins, the girls say they do, before their eyes meet and they wordlessly exchange a vow to meet in the finals. From behind them, a voice then chimes that it sounds like someone is confident, and as the four friends turn to look, Ash and Serena's eyes light up with recognition as they greet Serena's mum, Grace. Curiously, Serena asks her mother what she's doing here, and with a smile Grace replies that she's on her way to a temporary coaching job near Fuchsia City, and when she heard there was going to be a contest here tomorrow, she had to check if her daughter would be entering. Serena nods that she is, asking if her mum will come watch her perform live, with the dark-haired woman saying she wouldn't miss it for the world. In fact, she even bought her a present, a new dress to wear for the contest. Serena thanks her mother, and so heads up to her room to try it on, while Grace takes her vacated seat, introducing herself to Brock and Lysia, as well as catching up with Ash about all he and Serena have been up to. She is especially taken with Pikachu and Eevee, showing her experience as a Pokemon trainer by scratching the pair behind the ears in just the right position, and even producing a Pokepuff from her bag for each of them. Finally, Serena returns to show off her new dress to favorable reactions from her friends and mother. It is royal blue with white trim, and cut in a way that resembles a toga, giving it a sense of regality. Along with a glistening crystal hairpin and brooch, it makes for a striking ensemble, and when Grace asks if she likes it, the honey-haired girl replies that with this on she's certain to win the whole contest. The next morning comes quickly, with Ash, Brock and Grace finding themselves as spectators, while Lissy and Serena are backstage. Due to Eevee not being used this time, it sits on Grace's lap, giving excited little barks at this chance to watch its trainer in a contest. With rumour of this being a chance to practice a seldom used battle format that will come in handy for the Grand Festival, there is a higher than usual coordinated turnout, with it being almost an hour before either Serena or Lissia make their appearance. But when Lissia steps onto the stage, her friends among many others give her a round of thunder applause. Drinking this in, Lysia brings out her Squirtle, and when it strikes a cool pose in its pointed shades, the crowd fall in love with it. Having figured this might happen, Lysia next brings forth her Pikachu, dressed in a punk rocker outfit this time to match Squirtle. The two Pokemon make a striking pair, and their synchronicity is even more apparent when Lysia calls for something she calls Plasma Bubbles. At once, cosplay Pikachu gets on all fours, an Electro Ball crackling at the end of her tail, while Squirtle stands behind the Electro-type, launching a Bubble Beam directly into the Electro ball. As the bubbles pass through, they are not destroyed, instead gathering up a small portion of the electric attack's power so that each bubble now has a core of electricity with static tendrils arcing out to touch the edge of the bubble. This creates the effect of making each orb a miniature plasma ball, with the inspiration for the combo move's name being apparent. Throughout the contest hall, the sound of oohs and ahs can be heard from the audience as they gaze on and wonder at the floating spheres. However, this is not the end of Lysia's performance, as on her command, Pikachu at last launches the Electro Ball into the air. As if magnetized, the Plasma Balls all converge on their originator, coming together to form one giant Plasma Ball that dwarfs the Pokemon and even Lysia herself. It is an awe-inspiring sight, and it comes as no surprise when she is awarded high marks, with Mr. Tsukizo calling the performance remarkable. After another long gap, it is Serena's turn, and in spite of the nerves she felt when entering, now she feels confident, striding onto the stage and bringing out Quaxley along with Butterfree. When they are both in position, she gives her first command, and it is an odd one, for Quaxley to rub the top of its head all over Butterfree. Unlike the excited reaction Lysia received, Serena's choice leaves the crowd, judges, and even her ever-supportive mother skeptical at the disconcerting sight of a duckling wiping its head plumage on a bug. However, this is definitely doing 
something, as Butterfree quickly develops a glistening sheen, and when it is covered head to toe in whatever is making it shiny, Serena tells it to take to the air. When Butterfree is high enough up that everyone can see it, Serena calls for her next move, Water Gun. Without hesitation, Quaxley opens fire on its partner, but when the water type move makes impact, it immediately bounces off. Proudly, Serena explains that the blue plumage on top of Quaxley's head is held in place by a special type of wax, and wax naturally repels water, meaning while coated in the stuff, Butterfree is impervious to water type attacks. This at last gets the crowd's attention, with Serena thinking back to how she and Ash discovered that fact yesterday while looking for a way to protect Quaxley from being taken out in one hit. They'd been practicing with Krabby to see if the baby Pokemon could at least withstand a not very effective water move, and when a stray bubble attack had hit Quaxley's head and bounced off, the pair had struck upon a theory. After running a few more tests, they had been able to confirm that Quaxley's wax was water repellent, as well as something else, which while not useful for the appeal, might come in handy down the line, and so it set to work devising a way to make use of this for the contest. By now the audience have gotten a handle on what Serena is doing, and so she moves into the tricks portion of her appeal, having Quaxley start batting back some of the water gun's butterfree deflects using its own wax coating. Soon the pair of Pokemon get a volley going, bouncing a single water gun back and forth like a game of tennis. Then to add to the challenge, Quaxley launches another water gun, and another, until finally there are five different jets of water flying around the stage, for one of Serena's two Pokemon to catch and shoot back to their counterpart, all the while gaining speed. Eventually the water gun become too hard to keep track of, and so Serena enters the endgame, having Butterfree's confusion to freeze the five torrents in midair, then slam them together, causing a light rain to fall over the stage as the pair of Pokemon take their bow. Serena is pleased to see that her score is comparable to Lycia's, albeit slightly lower due to the slow start. Nonetheless, she heads backstage with a smile on her face and her Pokemon happily at her side. There are several more performances that follow this, though none are anything particularly special, and so it comes as little shock when Serena and Lycia are named the two finalists. Meeting back on stage, the friends and rivals wish each other luck, then on Lillian's command, bring out their pair of Pokemon. Lycia, having watched Serena's appeal from backstage and still seeing the waxy residue on Butterfree, knows better than to target either Pokemon with Squirtle's water attack, and so calls for Pikachu's electric to Rain, courtesy of its lab coat costume, followed by an Electro Ball on Quaxley instead. However, as the Orb of Energy is launched at the Baby Duck, Butterfree intercepts it, using its wings to grab the ball and shockingly hold it in place. Lycia, along with the audience, are stunned by this awe-inspiring display of a Pokemon holding back an attack that should not only be super effective, but is empowered by Electric Terrain. And as Lycia's points take a mighty dip, Serena explains that the other thing she learned about Wax yesterday is that it is an excellent insulator, meaning Electric Attacks won't get through either. It appears as though the Collosion Girl has made a perfect defense for herself, though appearances can be deceiving, as while Serena has allowed herself to be swept up in this advantage, Lycia has noticed something key. While wax does not conduct electricity, it still melts when heated, and being in contact with a superheated ball of electricity proves to be enough to melt the waxy coating on the tips of Butterfree's wings. Seizing upon this fact, Lycia has her two Pokemon create plasma bubbles just like they did in the appeal, though this time they shine even brighter under the electric terrain. She then has Pikachu hold them at the opposing team, with the knowledge that with Quaxley still being vulnerable to electric moves in the majority of its body, Butterfree will try to shield it. In this, Lycia is absolutely correct, with a butterfly Pokemon placing itself between Quaxley and the plasma bubbles, and unbeknownst to Serena, melting more and more of Butterfree's protective coating with each successive impact. Soon Lycia thinks she has chipped away enough of Butterfree's wax, and so goes on the attack proper, with a full power Electro Ball. In a confident tone, Serena tells Butterfree to bat it back with one of its wings, but as the Electro Ball makes contact, it sends a jolt through the winged bug, causing it to smolder and fall out of the air. Worriedly, Serena asks what's happened, and with a note of disappointment, Lycia tells her friend that she got overconfident and didn't consider the ways her wax strategy could be defeated. She then tells the younger girl about the heating effects of Electro Ball, and as Serena reels in the face of this new information, Lycia presses the advantage, having Squirtle go after Quaxley, while Pikachu attempts to take down Butterfree once and for all with a supercharged Electro Ball. Looking up at the scoreboard, Serena sees that she has a distinct lead in points from the Wax trick, but that will mean nothing if both her Pokemon go down. To prevent this, she has Quaxley scramble onto Butterfree's back, with the Butterfly Pokemon taking to the air once more. This does make the pair harder to hit, but it doesn't mean Lycia's Pokemon aren't going to give it a red hot go, with Squirtle buffeting Butterfree with water guns, while Pikachu keeps hurling Electro Balls at Quaxley. Expertly, Butterfree ducks and weaves, avoiding the blows, while down below Serena thanks her friend for pointing out the flaw in her strategy 
it being that she had gotten cocky, but now that her head is clear, it's time for the real battle to begin. Smiling, Lysias says she looks forward to it, since she only wants to beat her rival at her best. While with a smile forming in her own face, the honey-haired girl says the feeling's mutual. She then has Butterfree dive bomb Squirtle and Pikachu, seemingly trying to knock Pikachu out with a head-on collision as the biggest threat to both Quaxley and Butterfree. However, this is a feint, as when Lysia tries to finish Serena's duo with another electric terrain boosted Electro Ball, the collision girl has Quaxley leap off its partner's back and catch the attack on top of its head. This works surprisingly well, with the yellow orb casting rippling light over the blue top, while being resisted thanks to the wax. But this is not the entirety of the plan, as with a theatrical sweep of its head, Quaxley launches the Electro Ball, sending it soaring into Squirtle, and with the power up of the electric terrain, this is enough to put spirals in the turn. Turtle's eyes. However, Lysia's Pokemon are not the only ones going down, as with Quaxley otherwise occupied, Pikachu is able to launch another speedy Electro Ball, which strikes true on Butterfree. Strength failing it, the gutsy insect makes one last play, letting out a burst of confusion which staggers the Electric type, before slamming headfirst into it. Under the force of this two-pronged attack, Pikachu is unable to remain standing, and as both Pokemon hit the ground, the match is ended in double knockout, with the Dark Horse Quaxley being the last Pokemon left standing, subsequently making Serena the winner of not only the battle, but the entire Vermilion contest. With a look of surprise on her face, Serena steps forth to receive her ribbon, while Lissy along with the audience give their applause for a stellar performance. After the formalities are completed, the pair of coordinators reunite with their friends, with Brock having flowers for Lysia, while Grace has prepared a celebratory bouquet for Serena, though she is kind enough to allow Ash to give it to her. Serena for her part is still surprised that she won, but with a smile, Lysia says she deserves it, since that wax strategy was the sort of crazy creativity she'd expect from Ash, so maybe she ought to do a little more one-on-one -on -one training with her original companion. Turning red, Serena rapidly changes the subject, suggesting they all go out and get lunch, but with a sad shake of her head, Grace says she can't, since she's already late for a new job, so she's got to get going. She does, however, take one last chance to praise her daughter for how much she's grown since they last saw each other, before urging her to come visit before she returns to Carlos, and giving her the address of where she'll be staying. Grace then departs, leaving the four friends to celebrate Serena's victory, and plan their next move. And that's where we'll leave things. What lessons will Serena take away from this victory? How will Lysia grow from the loss? And where will the road to the Indigo Plateau and Grand Festival lead our heroes next? Find out as the journey continues.